Hello friends, my name is Jason Thompson and I'm the pastor of West Park United Church of Christ in Cleveland, Ohio. This year has been quite a challenge, quite a challenge for us all. But through these many months, we have leaned into our faith in God. And even as we may be physically separated from each other this year, we continue to rejoice in the promise of God and in the birth of Jesus Christ. This year's pageant tells the story of Christmas, the story of God's unending love for the whole world. Each scene you will see was recorded by different families all around Ohio, representing our shared Christian faith. We are thankful to all of our cast members, and we are especially grateful to our friends at Disciples Christian Church in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and to our friends at St. John's Lutheran Church in Cardington, Ohio, for helping us to complete this year's pageant. And just a little note for clarity, because of our filming limitations and our various filming locations, some of our characters in our story are played by different actors and some of the actors play different roles. So for again, for the sake of clarity, the characters being represented will be identified before each scene begins. So sit back and be reminded of the magic of Christmas and the joy of the gift of Jesus Christ to us all through the eyes of our children. West Park United Church of Christ is proud to present this year's Christmas pageant. Do not be afraid.
and they all lived happily ever after. The end. That was a good story. Good night, sweetie pie. Sleep well. Hey, wait a minute, Mom. Don't leave yet. Can you just stay just a little while longer? What's up, sweetie? You really need to get some sleep. I'm scared. That book made me nervous, and I'm thinking about all the things I'm afraid of. Like what? Airplanes, bees, COVID, ghosts, lice, mice, nighttime, questions, roller coasters, teasing, worms, x-rays, and zoom. Did you just list your fears in alphabetical order? Wow. Well, that's okay. Sometimes I feel afraid, too. So, how can I feel better now? I can't go to sleep when I'm scared. Well, stories help. When I'm afraid or worrying, I remember that I'm part of a story that's way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who are scared sometimes. You know, I think I have time to tell you one more story tonight. This part of God's story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, with a woman named Mary. my home. Do you want to talk to me? We haven't met before, have we? Do you want to hear what I have to say? I do! Pardon me. Let me start over. Greetings, favored one. God is with you. Uh, what kind of greeting is that? Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And now you are going to have a baby boy. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And his kingdom will have no end. How can this be? How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born of the Holy Spirit. He will be called the Son of God. Also, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though people thought it would be impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Was all of that a question? Um, no. Well, are you asking me if I want to do this? Good question. Um, yes. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to this message. I need to see Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you home? I'm coming in. Come on in, Mary! Mary, I have to tell you something. You are so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb is also blessed. The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Here! Feel it! Elizabeth, I'm also bursting with good news. God took one good look at me and look what happened. It's, I'm the most blessed woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. I'm talking about the God who knocked the powerful off 
their thrones and lifted up the lowly. So, um, can I stay with you for a few months? Mary is pregnant? How is that possible? We aren't even married yet. And the law said that that's not good. Not good at all. She claims the child as the child she carries is actually the child of God. My only option is to marry her then divorce her quietly. Then I will save my reputation at least. But then she'll be disgraced. I don't know what to do and I'm afraid. Oh Mary. <laughs> Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to get married. Married, God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. She will not will have a son, and you will not. You will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. Hold on, I have questions. Why is Joseph packing a bag? Why is Joseph afraid about Mary having a baby? Do angels still visit people in dreams? Why did Mary stay at Elizabeth's house? Who names a kid God saves? <laughs> Why is everyone making such a big deal about this? It's just a baby. The story's so weird. I just... <sighs> yeah. I don't know the answer to most of those questions. This is a bigger-than-life kind of story. And there are a lot of unexplainable and miraculous parts. That sounds like what Pastor Jason says when I ask a tough question. Well, good. I'm glad I sound like Pastor Jason, because we just don't have all the answers. Now, I do know the answer to one of those questions. Why is Joseph packing? To understand that, we need to meet the emperor. Citizens of Rome, it is I, your Lord and Savior, Good Shepherd, Light, Way, and Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I've done for you. There has never been an emperor as powerful and glorious as me. My empire is vast. You people are obedient. I'm saving all of you. All of you. And you owe me so much. So, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so that you can all pay me what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register your family so that you can show proper appreciation of just how awesome I am. I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell. Okay, the good news is I think I've found a place for us to stay. Finally, this baby's not going to wait much longer. Where are we staying? Oh, did you get a room at that inn I like? The one with the nice breakfast? Uh, well, not exactly. It was full. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Sleep outside with the shepherds? Stay in a stable with donkeys? No, no, no. Uh, who would do that? Joseph, this baby is coming soon. I know, I know. 
I I know. Well, the, the man who has the inn, he had a room for us to stay at his place. Yeah, is it a nice place? Lots of hay? Uh, well, it's it's a, a nice space. It has hay and maybe some animals. Okay, let's do this. Okay, stop there. What? Why? I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. <laughs> wow. Okay. We can talk about that later. The Bible doesn't really tell us anything about the birth anyway. It just says that Mary had a baby and wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a food trough. But that's it. Those are important details, though, to remember. For the next part of our story, it takes place in a field. Okay, keep going. There were shepherds living outside the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by some powerful messengers of God, but they would soon realize that they did not have to be afraid. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, <laughs> Glory to God? Am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid. I bring you good joy and, uh, and good news that will cause you great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior is born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be assigned to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This is good news for all the people. The Messiah is born, a Savior. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. That is all. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> So you guys saw that, right? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, uh, the yeah, sheep yeah, are making yeah. noises now? What is this the sheep? Yeah. 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 Well, are we, are we going to go to where the angel said that we're going to go? Let me see. Let me see. Um, yes, we're going to go. Uh, we have to go. Uh, do we bring the sheep? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Well, I, they got to they gotta let us know if they want us to take them with us. Yeah! 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 What was, what was the, uh, the sign that the angel said? It was going to be a baby wrapped baby. in cloths? Baby Santa! Lying in a manger? All right, guys, we're not going to forget the sign. Let's go to where the angel told us to go. Right. Come on. Hey, guys. That was a miracle. It was exactly how the angel had described. The baby was wrapped in a cloth and lying in a manger. Friends, we've seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels life changing. It feels like the world is changing. Yeah, but why do you think we got to see it? Nobody cares about us, shepherds. We're poor and we don't have very much power. I have no idea. But the baby's mother married act, acted like this was exactly what was supposed to happen. Like this was meant for people like us. Maybe this baby will lift up the lowly and bring down the lofty. Wouldn't that be something? It sure would. I believe there is no limit to what this baby can do.
Hey, Shepherds, was that star there last night? I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to our observatory. We are the wise men. Wise people. The magi. We are really more like scientists. Astronomers, we study the stars. We study the stars so well that something changes we notice immediately. And we just noticed a new star. We must follow our scientific instincts and find out why there is a new star in the sky. We now begin our journey. Go. Are we there yet? You literally just asked that. Now? Yes, yes, it, it, yes, yes, it looks like we are here. Here it is, Bethlehem. Let's look up the local king so we can get some more information. Did somebody say king? That would be me, King Herod. I have the big cheese around here. Everybody is talking about it. They all say that I am a powerful king. The best king Bethlehem has ever seen. We got it, best king ever. So... So, we are here because we're looking for the newly born king. The child born king of the Jews? We observe his star at its, at its rising. And, and we have to honor him. Uh, would you excuse me for a moment? I need to make a call. Hey. But me to my smart people. Hi, this is your king, the very best king. I need to know, according to your research, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Bethlehem, are you sure? Bye. Hi, wise folks. So, yeah, this is great. Go on and find this child and pay him honor. And get back to me. And get back to me about this so that I, too, can honor him. Uh, sure. Okay. We can do that. Let's get out of here. When we left Herod, he decided to sit around and be jealous and plan his revenge. He felt very threatened. There was a new leader that people were excited to meet. But we found Jesus and brought gifts to this special child. We brought gold, frankincense, myrrh. Usually, these gifts are for loyalty. Powerful people, grown men. Oopsies. But we brought these gifts to a tiny, weak, oppressed child. Even. Though we didn't know exactly what was going on, we knew he was important. This good news would turn everything upside down. Oh, and by the way, we didn't return to that wicked King Herod. Nope, no way. We were warned in a dream to take a different way home. You... You might say we took the scenic route. And now we return to watching the stars. Those wise people were very brave. They honored the king that God had chosen, brought him presents, disobeyed the orders of King Herod, and still made it home safely. Yes, they were brave and determined. Everyone in the story was, I think, from Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the magi, they all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. Sweet Pea, are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? Our story is coming to an end. Mm.
Yes, I do feel safe and sleepy. But this isn't really the end. No? Why not? It's bedtime. We need some sleep. Well, Mom, this is just the beginning. Jesus is born. He grows up. He changes the water to wine. He teaches. He heals. He flips tables. He yes, 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 you're right. Jesus' birth is just the beginning. We have a lot to talk about, but it's late. Tonight, let's focus on this one special moment, this one night that brought us Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good story. God's story is unfolding more good news every day. And in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust that love and justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, let's hear it from Mary, mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices unto God my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor on the low, lowliness of your servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessings. For you the mighty one have done great things for me. And holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who hear God. From generation to generation, you, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel in remembrance of your mercy according to the promises you made to our ancestors. The to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever. The end.